Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're in the kitchen. Okay, I've not quite finished but I have to get on with doing a recipe and today if you've seen the description earlier it's quite easy. We're actually going to do some party rolls. Now we're going to do two sorts. One are going to be the little long ones and some are going to be the little round ones. So and also you can use them for your kids. You pop them in their little boxes to take to school or whatever you want to do with them. And for your ingredients, first we'll start off with the flour. You want 450 grams. Now this is Shipton Mill number one and Shipton Mill Canadian mixed 50-50. So it, this is not an all purpose bread flour. This has got high protein. So you need extra water. So going to the water, you want 300 grams of cold water because it's quite hot outside. If it's a colder day, then yeah, go for a bit warm water. But today we're using cold water. Now moving on to the yeast, we are down to 14 grams of high active dried yeast. Now this basically is fresh yeast dried and ground down. So this is high active. This is not the domestic stuff off the shelf. But if you're using the domestic stuff, follow the instructions on the side of your container because that's the best way. Don't, don't contact me and say, Steve, what about dried yeast? This is dried yeast, but there's so many variations of dried yeast out there. You'd never know what you're going to do next. Now, seven grams of salt. Now, this is sea salt. I quite like sea salt. And then we got seven grams of sugar. Now, that's optional. If you don't want to use sugar, then you don't have to. And obviously we need some oil or some fat. Now in the recipe it says fat or lard, but veg oil is plenty good enough. And I prefer to actually use veg oil myself. And this is not your normal deer stuff. This is the cheap veg oil, by the way. Right, and now as an option, if it's hot weather and you wanna use it, go for it. This is bread improver. Now this will speed this recipe up, but we don't wanna speed up today. So I'm leaving it out. But if you're gonna use this, I would use sort of around about seven grams of this as well. You know, because usually your improver works out half the weight of your salt, if you remember that. And if you're making rolls, normally you'd be doing whatever the salt is, improver. I'm making more of a bread dough today because I don't want it, well, I don't want those blown up rolls. I just want them just like bread, to be honest, because they're, I think personally, that's the way they bread rolls should be, like bread. I make rolls every day, so I know exactly where I'm coming from. Right, so I suppose we better go and get on with it. So if you've seen any of my previous recipes, you'll know on going down to the room temperature, it's important to have a room temperature of around about 20 Celsius. That's best. And also, if you keep your flour around about 20 Celsius, you're on the money. Now today, I can tell you now, before we start, that flare is gonna be a little bit warmer. I whipped out the bakery this morning and I can almost guarantee it's gonna be a bit warmer now because it is warm in here and it's warm outside. But in the winter time, it's the opposite, that'll be cold. But the whole point of this recipe today, because when we've mixed up the dough, we're gonna be whacking that straight into the fridge. So let's get on with the mixing. So we're gonna be mixing this for around about five to 10 minutes. It depends on your mixer. Now my mixer, she's not really designed for doing doughs. She's a cake maker. So I don't want to kill my machine because I don't want to replace it, to be honest. And if I do replace it, I'm going to replace it with a little miniature spiral mixer because you can get a spiral mixer these days, same as I use in the bakery, but a miniature version. So I'm actually thinking about getting one of those sit on the side over here in that empty space. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right then, let's get on with the mixing. So today we're just gonna throw everything in. Huh. Funny enough, I don't usually do that. That's the salt, sugar. Oh, look, yeast, just whack it in. Right, we'll start this on first speed. Oh yes. So we start adding in our water, gradually. 
Now remember, because this is strong flour, you might need some extra water. Like I said, splash of oil. You can put what you want in, really. Cool, can you hear that? Yeah, I can. Sounds like my machine's struggling. And then even doing anything. It's hardly any dough in there. That's fine. There we go. Mixing nicely. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna knock that onto second speed. So we're gonna mix that for five minutes on third speed. It should take it with a bit of luck. We'll just stop it for a second, just as, oops, wrong way. Just to check it's not too stiff. Now the idea with this dough, I want a bit softer. Yep, that's nice and soft. The reason we want it softer because with this type of flour, it will just suck up the water and we don't want it hard. Now, whatever machine you're using, if you're using a bread machine to do this, that's great. But once it's mixed, whip it straight out of the bread machine and put it into the fridge. So we'll come back in five minutes. We'll have a look, but I would have anticipated this probably will take around 10 minutes, give or take. Right, your dough's ready. So if you haven't got any of this spray, you can get this off my eBay store. The link is in the description. And also I sell bread flour as well, if you're interested. That's also down in the description. So a little bit of spray oil around the bowl. And that's it. It's that simple and that's your dough. What we need to be doing now, to spray that oil around on that dough And there's your dough. All we're gonna do is put it into a plastic bag. Now, if you want to, you can sling that in a freezer if you wanna use it next week. Or, like we're gonna be using it, we're gonna pop that into the fridge and we want that chilled down so it's basically chilled as much as possible. So this is gonna prove in your fridge. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, it will do, believe me. So when it's doubled its size in the fridge, It'd be great. So we'll go and have a look and see what we've got in the fridge at the moment. Hmm, because I've actually done one earlier. There we go, that's the one I did earlier. So what we'll do is we'll get this cleared out of the way and we'll get on to making some rolls. You need a bit of flour and also you need your little scraper. Oh, I hope I don't take that off the table. It's me center mark. So let's put this straight onto the table. Oh, I just love the smell of dough from the fridge. Mmm, smells lovely. Right, so there's no worry with this. It's very simple. We're not going to do much weighing. In fact, the only weighing you're going to do is actually splitting up. Now, generally speaking, out of this dough, you're going to get around about 30 little rolls, give or take, you know, because we're not weighing them as such. So if we split them out in half, only a bit rough like. Split again, split again. So logically saying, if I rex 30, that's 15. So you want seven out of this one, seven out of this one. And again, so the easiest thing to do is just split it again. And again, and again. Well, there we go, wasn't that simple? Because you're not really worried about the sizes. If you want to be specific, I mean, 
this is just little dinner rolls, so you're not really going to be worried about it. If you're going to be worried that much about it, then weigh in. There we go. Right, this is where the fun begins. Now we've got all our dough pieces on the table. So what we're going to be doing with them? Well, first and foremost, what we need to do is we're going to be splitting them as well. So a bit of flour. So with a bit of luck, you can see this all right. What we're going to do is sort of roll it out a little bit and split it like that. And that's all you have to do. And just roll them round like that. Okay, roll it out, just split it in two. You never worry about if they're a bit odd shaped. They're at home. Of course, if you went into my baker's shop and you saw that like that, you'd say, oh, oh can I have that small one or that big one? You won't get that because I've got the machine. <laughs> so, so when I'm in the bakery, the machine is doing the work. I mean, this is, I don't mind doing this. This is, this is great because I'm showing you some. Right, so just to make sure you, <laughs> you do know. So we take our dough. Once we've rolled it up into two, we're going to split it. We're actually using that part of the hand to mold. So I'm sort of shaping it like that. And we're going like this, see? And this is what my machine does at work. But... It's like this, with nothing in, obviously. Now, the same thing is, the old bakers would tell you, if, you only, if you're one-handed baker, you only get half the money. So you always have to learn to mold twice. There you go, like that, see? It's very easy. I know they're rough and ready, but that doesn't matter. So the important thing now, we need a tray. Ha <laughs> ha, baking tray. Now, if you haven't got a tray this big, tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll need a tray. You'll probably have to have two trays. It depends on your oven. Um, I'm lucky enough, but all these rolls will fit on this tray. Well, I'm gonna make them fit anyway. So if you wanna have this recipe down again, you can, that's up to you. So what I've done is, this is baking parchment or silicone paper, and all I've done is sprayed it with prep spray. Now, if I didn't mention this, this is available off my eBay store. Check out the link below. And it's very cheap. For this size pot, this is like advertising, I'm not, I'm not going there. But this is a 600 milliliter pot. And normally, this type of product would set you back this amount. I mean, that would cost you nearly 20 quid because you only buy them in little pots. They never sell them as big as this. And this, delivered to your door, is 12 pound. As I said, today, uh, I'm not guaranteeing how much it's gonna go to because in fact, at the moment, the shipment of this, is, it's still easy and it's still at the right price. Same as the baking flour. If you buy the baking flour today, it's guaranteed is 28 quid delivered to the door. Now, prices are rising on baking flour. Everything is going up. But at the moment, I bought a shed full of flour so I can keep the price down. So I got shipped in mill number one. It's available down in the link below. Well, the description, you'll find it down there with this product and you can buy it directly from me and it'll go through eBay and send it out to you. I can't get any cheaper than 28 quid for the flour because obviously it's to do with the shipping. For some reason, shipping's gone up absolutely stupid. Hope it don't go up anymore. I've discontinued selling the wholemeal flour because the wholemeal flour was getting too expensive to buy in the first place. I had it in the shipping, I just wasn't prepared to do it. So all we're gonna do now, half of these we're gonna leave round and half of them we're gonna roll out. So we can just place them on the tray Need a bit of flour on your hands, just to stop in sticking. There you go, just place them on the tray. 
nice and close together. With this, I think it's gonna be around about 15 of each, give or take. In fact, I've got more air than I should have, really. Bit of flour, and all we're going to do is roll them out. Like that, little tiny ones. So I'll put these little finger ones on the end here. With a bit of luck, it should have been around about 30 of each. There you go. If you want to spread these out a bit more than this, you can. Now, all we're going to do now is prove these up. So all we're going to do is cover this with film or just damp cloth, whatever you want to, or alternatively, you can actually put them in the bottom of your oven. Don't forget to add a little bit of water if you're going to do that because you don't want to dry them out. So the best route really is to get yourself a cloth and that'll be plenty good enough and just leave it there. If you've got a nice room temperature of around 20 Celsius, that'll be fine. Now really for proving, you want to be up to about 25 Celsius. At the moment, this room is rising in temperature, so most likely it'll be fine. And we'll see you back when it's proved. And halfway through the proving, so I'm going to say this is going to take around about one hour because the dough's quite cold. Give or take. So give yourself 30 minutes and then pop your oven on. Now your oven temperature wants to be around about 210 Celsius, give or take. You can go a little bit hotter if you like. Now you, that's either fan or non fan assisted. We'll see you back in around about 30, 40 minutes. Well, there you go, folks. There's your rolls, they're ready. So they've taken three quarters of an hour. And what I did is I took them from here and I popped them into the oven on a very low heat, turned it off, put a little bit of water in and it proved up in the oven. So you can use that as a prover if you want than leaving them out on the side. Now a good way of testing them is just to put your finger on the top, just push them in. If it pops back out, it's ready. Okay, it's that simple. If you push it and it stays in, it can be two things. It's either not ready or they're completely shot. So we're going to get them into the oven. We're going to be baking these for around about 15 minutes. But I'm going to go for like a nice golden brown on the top, but I want to try and keep the outside, well, the base of it, whiter because I want them soft. Now, what you could have done is egg washed them prior to proving them and put in whatever you want on. Or you can just dust them with flour. I don't want to dust them with flour. I just don't want dust in there, anything. In fact, I might even spray them with oil when they come out. So let's get them into the oven. So I've actually put them at the top of the oven. Now, if you want to, you can add a little bit of water. Now, I did have water earlier. You can add a little bit of water. The only thing is they will make them crispier. Okay, so water, crispy, but we want them soft. So don't put any water in. That was just for me proving. So there we go, folks. They're in the oven. We'll just leave them there now. And we'll cross our fingers. They only take sort of like 10 minutes. I'll see you back in 10 minutes. Ooh, lovely. Can't beat bread straight from the oven. So there's your roll straight from the oven. Prep spray. You think it's just for tins, it's for everything. So all we're going to do is just give it a little bit of a spray. Okay, they're a little bit darker than I wanted really on the edge. Somebody was <laughs> looking after the oven. Okay, that goes with the territory, doesn't it? You know, but this is a new oven. The old oven, I knew exactly what I was doing. So I've got two ovens identical to each other and what can I say? One oven is different to the other, and yet one, they're both 12 year or 15 year old. One's a brand new one. Uh, I'm not gonna go there on at the moment with that, but they're both identical ovens, both made at exactly the same time, give or take. They're both delivered at the same time, but one oven is completely different to the other oven. What's that all about? 
So that is the same thing as I'm telling you now, this is a little tip, every oven is different. So your baking temperature, what I got, is gonna be completely different on your oven. Whether you're using, whether you're using a fan assisted oven, or on the other hand, you're using a non a fan assisted. So there we go, folks. There's your rolls. Oh, they smell lovely. You can't beat fresh rolls, can you? Okay, the end ones did get a bit burnt. <laughs> well, no, actually, they're just right, really, if you want to be honest. Even so, a little bit short of time may have been a useful. I did say I wanted a bit white around the edges, but obviously that didn't, that didn't seem to happen. But it doesn't matter, does it? You will only bake them how you want them. So if you want them nice and soft, you don't leave them in so long, yeah? And the same thing is if you want them crusty, so you can see where it caught on the edge of the oven. See, in the middle bit, that's fine, but on the edge just there. So even though you could turn around in the oven, I just left them today just to see what the oven, because to be perfectly honest, this oven's so new to me, I'm basically testing the oven out at the same time as baking. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe and please share. And don't forget your recipe is in the description. And also whilst you're down there, you'll find a number of playlists with lots more recipes for you guys. They are there for you. I'm quite happy making them for you. And if you want to, there is a little button down there. If you want to give a little bit towards the channel, you can go for that as well. And we'll see you again very shortly on the Crazy Baker channel. Laters. This is the Crazy Baker channel. Baking. Lifestyle. Recipes. Reviews. I am the Crazy Baker. Please subscribe and please share. Laters!